Welcome to this CF Wheels tutorial. Today we're just going to have a look at creating a basic CRUD interface in Wheels 2.0. If you want to follow along, you need to make sure you've got a couple of things installed first. One is Command Box, which lets us run CFML servers very, very easily via the command line. And the other thing is the CF Wheels command line interface, which is a module for Command Box. You can install the CF Wheels command line interface via install CF Wheels CLI. You'll also want a database server of some description. For this date tutorial, we're going to use MySQL. So to get started, I've just created a new directory. And as you can see, there's nothing in it. From here, I'm going to use the wheels new command, which starts the new application wizard. So first we need to enter a name for application. I'm just going to use my app and it's going to ask you which version of wheels and we want the latest stable release so that's option two and we're going to want a reload word, password for our application so we're just going to set that to foo here we can enter data source information if it's different from my app i'm going to make my data source just called my app so i'm just going to press enter here and it's going to ask me which CFML engine I want to use in command box. So I'm going to select one, which is just the Lucy default. And it's also going to ask me whether I want to use the embedded H2 database. I'm going to select no for this. When installing via the CLI, we also have some additional options, such as setting up bootstrap and some default templating. We're going to do this just to speed things up. So then you get a quick confirmation and we can continue. Now that's been installed locally, let's go and have a look and see what it's actually done. So you can see the CLI has set up a default CF Wheels installation skeleton. Um, it's altered a few configuration files with some of our preferences from when we ran the installation wizard. And it's also created files like a URL rewrite file, which is for use in command box. And it's also added a server.json file, which is what we're going to use now to start the application. So back in our command line, we can just simply do start. And we end up on the congratulations screen. So this means everything's working OK. You'll notice it's running at port 60,000, which is what we set in the server.json file. If you scroll down the bottom, you'll see a debug footer and you can see that the application name and the data source name have all made it into the configuration. I've not yet set up the data source, so let's do that. So first, we're just going to log in to the Lucy administrator. And because this is a new installation, we've not actually set a password yet, so we're going to do that quickly. And we're going to get a data source and we are going to create the new data source. The first thing I'm going to do though is actually go to MySQL and create the actual database. So I'm just going to call this my app and I'm going to set it to UTF-8. And I'm just going to use the root credentials. So that's all we really need to do now. So back in Lucy, we're going to add our data source, my app, and we're going to set the driver to be MySQL. And we're going to just fill out the credentials. And create the data source. So now we can actually get onto creating users via the CLI. So Back in command box, we're going to run the following command, wheels scaffold. And we need to enter the name of the object, so that is user. And then the model, which will be user again. And the controller, which was going to be users, plural. And we're going to not migrate the database now, we're just going to select no. So what that's done is created some skeleton view files, um, 
a model file, a controller.cfc file, so we can start managing our user. So we can have a quick look at that. Under controllers, we now have a users controller, which will contain all our business logic for creating and updating the user. And under models, we've got a user.cfc file. And under views, we've got a new users folder with various bits and bobs in it. So whilst we've got a basic user model now, we don't actually have any properties on it. So let's add some, and we can do that via the command line. So back on the CLI, we're going to do wheels and G, which G is a alias for generate, so it's a shortcut. And we're going to say property, because we want to generate a property, and we want to do it on the user model. And the property name is going to be first name, and press enter. So what that has done is, firstly, it's created a new database migration file, which we'll come to in a bit. Um, and it's also inserted a text field helper into our form partial so that we can actually add and edit data. And it's also inserted a placeholder into the actual index listing. Lastly, it's added an output of this field into the show.cfm file, view file. So we're not going to migrate the database just yet because we're going to do that in a mo. But we're going to add a couple more properties just to fill it out a bit. So let's do instead of first name, let's add last name. And let's add email. So before we actually run the database migration, what we're going to have a do is have a look at the, the migration files which it's actually created. And we're going to consolidate those a little bit. So back in our application, you should now see a migrator folder with a subfolder called migrations. And within that, there are four generated CFC files. We want to consolidate these down to a single file. The CFCs in the wheels migration system have two functions. One is called up and one is called down. Anything you do in up, you need to undo in down. So if we look at this CFC, for example, we've got a create table call and in our down function, we've got a drop table call. Whilst we could technically run the database migrations now, we're actually going to remove the latter CFC files and put everything in this create table call. So let's delete these three and concentrate on this file. If you look at the top of any migration file, you'll see a handy reference of all the various uh, functions you can call. Um, so for my columns, I'm just going to add uh, some string based columns. So I'm going to do T string and then column names equals first name and we're going to do last name there as well. And we're going to set null to be false. So null is whether you allow null values and we're not going to, we want them to fill in both the first name and last name. And we'll put a limit of one no, no, limit of 50 on each of those. And we also can add a second call, which will be slightly different for the email field. And we're going to set the limit for that to be 255. OK, so those are three column calls. So now if we save this, we can actually run the migration. So there's two ways of running migrations. One is via the CLI itself, and the other is via the GUI interface on the actual website. So we're going to use the GUI. So if we scroll down to our debug footer, we can now follow this migrations link which gives you the migrations user interface. You get some basic database information to start with. Uh, you get the option to sort of create templates manually here as well. Um, so if you don't want to use the CLI for creating basic templates, you can, you can do it via here. And here we've got the actual migration. So we're going to migrate to this latest version here. We can either do it by just pressing here or migrate to latest. So you always see the result up above the uh, tabbed interface. So that has gone from zero because there was nothing in the database 
to the timestamped CFC version. Now we've migrated the database, we can reload the application by doing reload equals true and our password from earlier, which was foo. And if we just go straight to forward slash users, we get the user index. So now we can create a new user, add some data, And then we see we've got view, edit, and delete actions. So we can edit to go back to that user, or we can view or delete. 